you know, in order to progress quickly, the way you always want it, you know, the way you always ask me, Master, how do I do it to progress quick, 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 quick? I told you, put down, put down, put down, put down, but you don't. You come here with a lot of friends, relatives, sons and daughters. I tell you, you have them all day long, all life long. Only five days for God, no, that guy comes second. That's why you don't progress. Understand? The only secret is put down. God takes care of everything. We cannot do anything. If God's grace is not there, we cannot do anything. Of course, you come here, you ask me to intervene with your destiny. Yeah, sometimes I could ask God to do it. It's not my problem. I could intervene, I could do anything for you. But it's your problem. Because if you come here with that intention, that's all you get. You see? Maybe your son get better, your daughter got a good marriage, but that's all you got. And the whole treasure you left behind. And that's a pity for you. You see? That's why I'm not bothered. If you ask me any question, mundane question or petty question, I could answer you, I could help you anything, but I just feel bad for you. You came here only five days, you cannot even remember God. Just for once, just come here just for Him, just for God. No, you always come here and try to make excuse or for all kind of favor. All this kind of favor you could ask at home, I tell you truly. Any time you pray to God, a master power is heard. We are not deaf. <laughs> I hope you don't think. <laughs> and I don't hope you think that I am here. Yeah? That I'm sick, I'm ill, I'm weak, I'm small, I'm big, I'm that and this. No, no, no. It's not me, it's not this person, okay? So we're not deaf, we're not dumb, we're not blind, we're not stupid. <laughs> so no need to come here whining all over your family and friends and your problem, your misfortune. You can, you can talk to me everything you want. Of course, if you want to take me as a mother, as a friend, uh, to a shoulder to cry on, that is fine also. But remember, these are only secondary. And whenever a retreat comes, you should take the advantage of this time of no disturbance, no demanding from family and friends, no business, no work, no boss, no colleagues, no husband, wife, we separate for you, ah, no quarrel, no kids. You should concentrate, treasure this time as if after this you die. You have no more chance to even worry about your family who left behind. Would you have a chance to worry about them when you die? Would you? No. And you don't know if I am alive again next day, after five days, if I'm still here to make another retreat. So you're really silly. The one who don't progress is really silly. Every time you come to retreat, we remind you, you know, concentrate on one guy only. One husband, one wife, that's the true faithfulness, yeah? It's not about you being loyal to your spouse on this planet, but you have to be loyal to the spouse in heaven, and this is the most important, because the spouse here can leave you any time. If you became ugly, you become sick, you become old, or you, he missed somebody better, or the karma loosen, or he missed somebody, uh, you know, from the past life that he feel better with, and you do. <laughs> but the spouse in heaven never, never leaves us, and we are very unfaithful. That's bad news, huh? <laughs> Nevertheless, I hope you learn your lesson this time that you have not progressed, whenever, if we have next time again, take your chance, okay? Okay, baby. <laughs>
，有灵类。他这个是外国人，他已经一百岁了。春天来的时候，他穿那个毛衣，嗯，然后跑到田里面去，捡那些人家已经已经收化好那些稻米啊，捡一些剩下的带回去啊，一边去一边唱歌，嗯，孔子。又来了，又来了！他这个人乱跑，呵呵去哪里都碰到这些奇奇怪怪的人。嗯、啊，孔子啊，他就经过了，他经过魏国。嗯，看那个老人呢、啊，在那边捡那个人家剩下的米，一边唱歌，就叫徒弟过去跟他问号啊，觉得这个人比较特殊，哎，所以叫徒弟过去问他看看，哎、啊，聊一下啊。职工啊，就去了。职工跑到那边就抓到他，面对他，看他又老又瘦又比较贫穷，大概没什么很足够东西吃那种了、啊。职工叹一口气，这样子，大概对不起他了，可怜他啊，就问他：“你没什么？”觉得很惭愧吗？在那边去捡那个糙米，身上人家丢的糙米，身上不要的糙米，还在那边唱歌，你没什么觉得惭愧吗？然后那个老人他继续那个唱歌，还边边走，嗯、啊，边唱歌不理他。子贡又再跑过来，再问一次，嗯、啊，然后终于啊，那个。灵类那个人啊，才说：“我有什么要惭愧呢？”嗯，子贡说：“啊，看你这个生活嘛，大概你，呃、啊，年轻的时候，是不是比较不很认真呢、啊？嗯、啊，大家不认真读书啊，不认真争取自己的那个工作等等哈、啊。然后你长大了。”是不是你跟不上时代啊？他一直说你现在才变这个样子吗？哎，批评他。然后你现在那么老了，啊，一个太太也没有。<笑>他一直说太太小孩一个都没有，嗯。然后你又快死了，啊，有什么好高兴？还在那边一边捡。那个那个迷啊，一边还唱歌呢，嗯，然后那个灵灵泪还笑的，哈哈哈哈，小的笑一样，我是不一样，也许在笑，哈哈哈哈哈，嗯，然后他就说，啊，我认为该欢喜的东西呀、啊，啊，那个别人不一定认为呀、啊，认为他是该欢喜的。嗯，他也许他们也认为是很懊恼的啊！我该万喜的东西，呃，别人也许认为很懊恼。我既然年轻的时候不认真呢、啊，然后长大了也时候不跟着时代跑了，所以现在我才那么长寿。他意思说，如果他。呃，小时候太认真了读书，或是太认真去争夺名利、工作太过分苦恼的话，也许早都失落。所以他认为，因为他很懒惰了，呵呵不懂事了啊，所以他才那么寿命。这边有没有人寿命那么长啊？有没有什么人懒惰？举手给我看一下。看哪一个人寿命很长就知道了，就跟那个老人一样。呵呵还有他继续讲，所以他觉得那个是很很干欢喜的事情呢、啊，寿命很长是很欢喜的。还有他说他现在已经很老了，没有因为没有小孩没有太太，所以才那么快乐、啊。那时候认为如果他有太太有小孩，也许他唱不出来了，嗯，也许唱不同的歌了，呵呵唱那种懊恼的歌哈，嗯，你看现在。我已经快死了，我还这么快乐，就因为我没有小孩，没有太太的缘故
。然后子贡就问他：“每个人都喜欢长寿，要讨厌那个死亡啊？你为什么认为死亡就这么快乐呢？”那个老人就说：“哎呀，我认为啊，生死啊，由来就有趣啊。如果我们在这边死啊。”我们又不知道是不是我们要马上生在别的地方的呢？比较好的呢？嗯，还有我们怎么知道生啊跟死啊本来就没什么差别的？还有我们怎么能够知道？呃，我们在那边一生辛苦赚钱为了生存的，我们怎么知道那个不是是很无名的一个事情啊？还有我们怎么知道啊？如果我们现在死了，会不会比那个活的时候还要快乐的？啊，然后子贡啊，他听了以后，他咬鼻子啊，啊不大懂啊，嗯、啊，就把回去告诉师傅。孔子就跟他说：“我已经知道应该跟那个老人聊一聊啦，没错啦，不过这个人呐、啊，他嗯了解一部分而已啊。”他还没有了解完全，你们这起评论呢、啊？啊，如果什么人想快乐啊，什么轻松自在啊，就不要结婚就对了。<笑>那个人他这样讲，他已经活到一百岁了，不是说他很了解了，<笑>要听他。哎呀，我告诉你，有时候我们认为我们得到这个，就会失去那个，是不是？啊，很少很少得到什么爱情，然后这样快乐活下去。有吗？有吗？有哈，一定有哈。看你们脸那么亮，有没有？有。列子、杨子、孔子、弟子，什么都吃。<笑>有一天，孔子到那个泰山去散步，去玩了、啊，玩山。啊，碰到一个人，他名字是叫好像荣凯奇什么啦，他穿。衣服简单就对了，这种在山上找到的他就赚。然后他那个腰啊，就绑一只那个那个书的藤类那个当腰带，哎，一说很很简单的、啊，很嗯很朴素就对了，嗯。然后他这个人呢、啊，一边走路，一边。呃，弹馒头林，<笑>然后他在那边走来走去，在那个田里面啊，很轻松快乐就对了。孔子就问他：“您有什么喜事啊？看起来这么欢喜呢？”嗯，那个人就答说：“哎呀，和尚啊。”很多喜事了，太多喜事，太多喜事了。嗯，那孔子就问：“那能不能告诉我们一些啦？然后那个老先生啊，就跟他讲：“天哪、啊，生了很多种类的众生，只有人呢、啊、是最高贵的。那么我能够得到人生，那就是一个喜事了。”所以我很高兴，嗯，好，现在他还有很多喜事了，他继续讲下去了，嗯，他说、啊、有一些人呢、啊，生出来的以后，就太阳、月亮都看不到的，或是有一些人刚生出来就死了，所以我觉得我自己生出来呀、啊，什么境界都看得到。啊，太阳日出日落都都很清楚，所以他觉得他这个人生啊，多有一个喜事，还有眼睛可以看到，而且从那个印信了以后，他的多增加一个眼睛，这个叫做智慧眼，所以他觉得他眼睛很多，<笑>就看不到什么东西，<笑>所以他觉得他喜事很多哈。啊然后那些人刚生出来就死了，反而他自己本人已经活到快九十岁了，还没死，所以他觉得很那个愉快，很有福报就对了，还很多喜事。
，这个老人呢、啊，他说即使他很贫穷啊，啊，不过贫穷就是有智慧的人，平常的那种命啊，他也许是真的有智慧的，也许的，嗯。然后他说：“即使我们生死也是一个普通的事情啊，嗯，他又得到那个智慧的，又能够活了，然后死的跟大部分的人一样，所以他觉得，呃，很愉快，没有什么好抱怨的。”然后孔子就赞叹他说：“山哉，山哉，山山哉，嗯，非常明了这样。”你们觉得这个人明了吗 ？OK， 那我们给他多少点？一个 A 哈。嗯，不错啦。既然孔子说他不错，一定不错啦。你们觉得像这样子的生活够用了吗？够不够用？这个人呢、啊，平常是很很普通的一个人，不过他能够这样了解，已经很很不错哈。好。那我们看那个古代的圣贤呐、啊，他们真的很知足满足，哎，啊，不是说应该有很多东西，有很多财产，有很多衣服，他才高兴。我们如果内在很充满高兴的话，那当然什么情况我们都高兴，是不是这样子 ？Human beings continue to do many bad things since time immemorial. So it's very difficult to erase their bad uh, reference within their DNA, huh? because sometimes we are born with a body which are imprinted by many uh, good as well as many bad, you know, information within ourselves, which we are helplessly inherited, and we we can't do nothing about it. Except we meditate, we cleanse it out, we erase it, you know, and make no trace. Every day we erase something, and no trace of this negativity left within ourselves. Then we may do some good thing. That's why, even though you you have Buddha nature, and you have God within you, you still have to fight with these imprints of the DNA cells. That's why you work slow, and that's why you do some negative things. That is sometimes even against your own will. Otherwise, even if we want to do good without meditation, without God's power to cleanse our imprints of the DNA of the cells, we cannot do much. That's why the world is like this. That's why many people want to do good but cannot struggle with this negative trace, which already born before we even come into this body, already there. Now you understand, huh? Now you understand why you must meditate, and you must be vegetarian, so that you don't have more bad negative traits, you know, in, add into your own already bad DNA. You had enough bad stuff, okay? <laughs> no need extra. Yes. Even if you cannot meditate so long, it's also DNA. Yes. <laughs> you probably got a body that never meditated in last life. Maybe the great 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 grandparent down never nobody meditate in that family. Then sometimes you you cannot、uh, get born into the proper family because they always take pills nowadays and they have abortion and that. So you have to jump in any family and then you get bad DNA also. That's the bad news. But the good news is that we can erase them by meditation and the light and the sound. So that's why we are here. All right. So you heard that the Buddha was already a Buddha before he came to the world, but he has to meditate six years. And Jesus, the Son of God, when he came here, he had to run around for 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 a dozen of years to learn with different teachers and have to meditate in the desert before he can come out and be a perfect master. Huh? You know why? Huh? DNA problem. Okay. So this、uh, not because we are good, we are bad. It's just the tool. That we are inherit, we we have inherited, you know, is sometimes not what we wanted. So forgive yourself, but try again all the time. When we die, the soul,、um, the soul is free,、mm. right?、Uh, is this a soul that carries the karma from life to life? What、uh. carries the karma from life to life? 
It is the mind. It is the alaya, alaya. It is the power of memories. That is in the soul? No, it's not in the soul. It's a kind of energy force. When you do something, it generates some energy. And that energy forms a certain formula or certain uh, conception or certain uh, uh, form, however invisible to the physical eyes. And these energies, uh, these formulas stick together and make a kind of pattern, okay? And through this pattern, the soul experience up and down, bad and good in this world. And after a long period, the soul identifies itself with this kind of pattern instead of realizing it is free from that pattern. Just like after you work too much with a computer, you get stick to it, and maybe you forgot yourself, you forgot to eat, you forgot to sleep. You just stick yourself with the computer, and then the computer go wrong, the computer make a mistake, and you get angry. <laughs> and then sometimes you blame yourself for the mistakes. And then you get trouble with the mistake, and you correct the mistake, and you have fix it, and you have so much trouble and uh, anger with the computer. Yeah, and you stick to that all the time, past your lunch time and all that because of the mistakes. And you completely forgot all the duty and that your wife's waiting that you are Mr. Such and Such. And you're free. You don't need to stick there. Yeah. And now the pattern of the past and the formula of the past will form kind of a solid uh, but invisible force. Yeah. And the soul will see through it and then it kind of attached with it. And if you don't have a kind of wisdom to detach yourself with the information that you have gathered through life after life, then you are in trouble. You identify yourself with trouble. You always try to solve the troubles, and then you always entangle in troubles. And that's how the soul is not free from troubles. And after, after we die, the soul sticks itself with the troubles and try to solve the troubles again in the next body, in the next opportunity. Therefore, we reincarnate and reincarnate and reincarnate. Only when we realize that the troubles are trouble, we can always throw it away and we don't need to solve it, and throw everything all together in a dustbin, and just do what the necessary leftover that is still attached to our soul, and then get rid of them, and then free. Because that has anything to do with the level that we reach? Sure, yes. sure, sure, sure. Most of the people who do not practice, they are at human level. Just get bound with the problems, with the habits from many lives. And they think they have to take care of all this, and they have to solve all this problem. If they couldn't solve in this life, they come back the next. And when they came back the next life, they have a new problem. And the old problems has not been solved. The new problem has already developed. So they always envelop themselves and entangle in this kind of mess and they can never get out until the Master come and point the way invisibly to them and they can say, this way you must go and leave all that garbage there. Without you, nobody die. <laughs> Without all this problem, you don't uh, die. This problem is self-created. You just throw all the bundle in the dustbin and that's done with and go with me. Then the soul begins to realize what a mistake, what a waste of time he has been sticking in the mud all the time. So now he get up, yeah, begin a new life, okay? In 85, when I was in China first, in mm. Beijing, and as the taxi drove me from the airport to Beijing, mm. I had this incredible sense of having déjà vu have mm. been there before, yeah, yeah. and an incredible sense of freedom. Oh, and I thought perhaps it's just my imagination. Mm. And yeah. next time I was there, the same feeling was repeated. Yeah. Um, now I know that Kuan Yin uh, mm. has spent time in that area, mm. but I don't know much more than that about mm. it. Maybe mm. you could tell me a little more. At least you have to ask her. <laughs> <laughs> in some place where we have lived before in previous lives or life, and where we had good experience with life and f good feeling, 
then whenever we had chance to go back to that place, we will re-experience this kind of feeling again. It doesn't matter if it's in China or if it's in Holland or anywhere else. Okay? That's this why in some places we feel very good and some other places with no reason. We feel so bad and burdened and frightened sometimes. Frightened for no reason. Feel kind of uh, depressed and um, yeah, feel kind of uh, frightened, yeah. And some place we feel so free. <laughs> so that's why we should cultivate this kind of freedom feeling, uh, bliss within ourselves and take it everywhere with us. So it doesn't matter whether that place had a good experience before or not, we would be able to live freely in that area on the feel good. Mm. When we are sleeping and see the dreams, our body is asleep, our eyes are asleep, who's seeing the dream? Well, this is the soul, as your real self, not the body. We are not the body, yeah. Therefore we say the soul doesn't have eyes or nose, but see everything, know everything. Therefore I told you to see with the eye of the soul and to close your eyes, and we no need the eyes. And also that proof that we are not the body and the physical eyes cannot see anything without the soul power. Yeah? It proves that we are different than the body, that we exist. And the body is just an instrument or maybe a prison house that we have built by mistake. <laughs> or maybe it's necessary in this world to have a room to house the soul. <laughs> and then you don't want to know you have that power. So I read, uh, it's a really beautiful story. I only read a bit, I don't know much about him, but yeah. he was saying that he didn't want to know, so always his shadow was healing and, and doing the miracles. I thought it was so beautiful when uh -huh. I read it. I said, oh, that's so okay. nice. An interesting thing is, um, Sometimes I have migraine, and then when I'm doing the sound, it's totally gone. But then, unfortunately, when it ends, and then the migraine comes back. Sometimes. It yes. continues for a while. <laughs> I'm not asking. It's nothing I know, to, I know, to I know. heal, you it's know what I mean? Automatic. It's interesting. Maybe one day it will be different. And then it'll be gone forever. Keep doing, and then one day it'll be gone for good. It won't even come back. There are a little bad karma that you have right now. Okay. And do as much calling as you can. Of course, uh, proportionally, yeah. the sound and the light. Do as long as you can. Okay. And then, with the time, it'll be gone. Well, thank God, it's only some time you have migraine, not all the time. Yes, yeah. I understand. don't have all the time. It's only very interesting thank how God. such a painful pain can go... Just by doing the sound yeah. meditation. Yeah. And then sometimes you would not do it because you were in pain and you said, Oh, you know, I How can I do, it? do yes. it? But it's the opposite. It's the opposite. It's the op yeah. Just try to do it and then the result will come immediately. I told you many times. Mm -hmm. I don't tell lie to you. I tell only the truth. Not just migraine, but that is the, the most revealing, it's most obvious to you. You yes, can see right away. Yeah. Anything else you don't see very well. You know, yeah. like sometimes you have hidden cancer you don't know yet. And it's also gone before the doctor even know it, mm -hmm. before you even know it. It heals so many things in your body, not just to talk about spirit. But you don't know it because you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> not just a migraine. It's just a migraine. It's so obvious that you know immediately. That's See? true. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask one other? Sure, sure. Of course, of course. It's about the wisdom that we are talking before the wisdom and practicing the Kuan Yin. You develop your wisdom. Sometimes you get a bit of a message or something. Yeah. And then it's so quick and then it's gone, and then you lose it. And then later on, you will realize that you were in touch with that before. Uh -huh. But um, maybe, I don't know, um, not ready, able to get it and to and use it. You got it. it, you got it, you got it. Just your brain didn't get it. Your mind didn't get it. But once you get it, you won't lose it. How you expect the brain or the mind to store all these wonderful things is out of this world for you. Okay. Once you get it, you get it. You just want to hold on to it in the brain. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. What you get, you get. It's good. It will be adding, adding until you're completely enlightened. 
Mm, okay. Yeah. But uh, you already progress as much as our brain can capish. That's the thing. Everything else is just belonging to the higher sphere and it's difficult for us to calculate here. That's why sometimes you, you feel like you're still not yet that intelligent the way you want, but you are, don't worry. What I'm dealing with is just your ego, not you, but I mean everybody sometimes. I have to cut it as much as I can. Somebody asked me about what they call the soul. Let me explain. In Buddhism, there is a term called Zhong Yin Shen. Zhong Yin Shen means the body that you use after you left this physical body, just before you enter into another kind of existence. Yeah? Before you enter into the womb or another kind of existence. Forty-nine days, your soul or your so-called Zhong Yin body, yeah, mean the in the middle body, yeah, will fly around the world, up and down and in and out, and finding some places to rest, or some purpose of life, or somewhere to reincarnate. And people ask me, with this kind of body, <laughs> can we become Buddha? I say yes and no. Yes, if you have during the physical life already let the seed of your enlightenment sprout forth. And then after you leave the body, the sprout continue to grow. Because only in this fertile ground the seed can sprout. Without water, without earth, no sprout. Understand? But no, if in the physical body you have not let the seed of the Buddhahood sprout forth or the kingdom of God have not opened, yeah? So when you leave the body, you are still like that. If you are not literate in this life, after you die, will you become literate? No, of course not. You are <laughs> you even worse only, yeah? So that's why the Buddha say the human body is very, very precious, very precious, because we can use it to fertilize our growth into Buddhahood. But those who practice Kuan Yin method, uh, to get enlightenment or after initiation, you need not go through the period in between. Understand? You go directly to Buddha's land, to where your master is, and there you learn further if you have not learned enough. If you have learned enough, you become a master in some land above the earth, or you come back to the earth, become a master of the earthly citizen. If you have not developed enough into mastership, then you go to where your master stay. He takes care of you, teach you, educate you, develop until you become the teacher yourself, okay? You need not go through the wandering period of the Chung Yin Shen. So no problem, yeah? I promise. <laughs> there are many ways we can earn marriage, you know, and much more than that, by being selfless by helping other people, yeah? But not to get married out of it, but to truly serve, because you feel sorry for other people, because other people suffer, it's just like you suffer, yes? Or you go out and use your finance to distribute a sample booklet, or, you know, do something to help the public to raise awareness, yes? And that you earn a lot of merit. This kind of thing will always bring you lots of merit and rise your level, yes, no problem at all. Of course your parents will give you anything when you need it, yeah? They even sacrifice themselves for you. But if you can, then why don't you go out and work and have your own bank account and relieve your parents of some of the, the trouble and, you know, let them have a little bit extra money to go on their old age vacation. 34 years, diamond, jubilee, whatever. <laughs> that wouldn't be nicer, yeah? Okay. So we, the practitioner, must have a right conception about how to behave, what to be as a human, yes? Never thinking of to take even anything at all, anything at all, even blessing, no. 
because it will flow to you automatically but by wanting it your mind step in your ego stop it and then we have even more problem of getting the blessing distributed to you yes. by grasping thing we don't have it very nicely <laughs> if we have it at all we don't have it now. of course in desperate situation we pray or before we meditate or something pray like okay please help me to have a good meditation yes that is a very good prayer yeah good request yes good meditation why so that you have more wisdom and your level elevate and then you can use it to help other people then is a very good request but not so that you go up very high and then you feel cool about yourself <laughs> and go out and say, I'm already on the sixth level. You know that? <laughs> Just master doesn't say nothing, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. A correct conception is very important, eh? Very important. Maybe you don't think it's important, but it is. You know, everything boiled out to these five precepts. When you're yeah. still in this physical body, you adhere to it. It would be a good fence, yeah, for you, so that you don't stray over to the neighbor. <laughs> Sometimes bad neighborhood, yeah, okay? You know, in some of your country, yeah, people say, oh, don't go there, don't go here. Uh, it's a bad neighborhood. There is bad neighborhood in some countries. Many countries have bad neighborhoods, yeah? Even in the most glorious city, they have bad corner somewhere. And we just leave it alone, <laughs> yes? We don't have to go there and make trouble or despise them or criticize anything, but we leave it alone. There is a retreat. There's a master named Benke. <laughs> There's another Japanese name. <laughs> oh, but actually these are not all Japanese because the Japanese Zen came from Chinese Zen. And many of the book story, the master, are the Chinese master, but they translate it into Japanese. Uh, just like uh, my name is Ching Hai, and in Vietnam is it Tan Hai. Now, there was a master called Banke, and this is supposed to be a Japanese one, because many Japanese students came from all over Japan to come to this seven days retreat. During the course of retreat, there's one person, one disciple, who are caught in the act of stealing something. <laughs> so then, uh, uh, everybody in the retreat, requested the master to expel the disciple, the thief, the stealing disciple. But the master did not uh, do anything. Uh, he seemed not to pay attention about it. And next time, this disciple do another thing again. <laughs> How can you do that? Repeatedly broke the precepts, right? One of the five precepts. And other good disciples also requested the master that he should expel the disciple outside of the uh, practicing circle, outside of the temple. But the master also don't say anything. Uh, don't do anything. Mm. It's funny. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Mm. And then another time, the same thing happened again. And the disciple requested that the master throw him out. Because he, he's just a thief, he's no good. But the master also don't want to do anything about it. So one day, the good disciple uh, gathered together and said to the master, Look, if you don't take care of this, if you don't drive him out, if you don't throw him out, we will go to another temple to stay. We don't stay here. <laughs> we don't want to be contaminated. We don't want to stay with the thief, do we? <laughs> no, uh, okay. And so they um, give him the ultimate warning. Yeah. And the master just sighed, you know, like this. Namo Omitofu, Amitabha Buddha. And then he recited Jesus' name, and then Muhammad, every saint's name he recited. And then he said to the good disciples, I know, I know, I know you're right. But uh, I don't want to throw them out because, look, all of you are intelligent, all of you are good and well uh, virtuous. 
and uh, morally a very high standard. And you're very intelligent, very capable, and you practice very well. Therefore, you can keep the precept very well. This man, he doesn't even know right from wrong. If I don't teach him, who else will? So if you want to go away, you go. I keep it. And then after that, they live together nicely. And then that disciple, who were always stealing, also cry. And after that, he never steal no more. So that's good. Inside our wisdom, our soul, we understand everything without need for language. And we could communicate in whatever language that is required. But outside, in this world of matter, we cannot break the law. Therefore, we speak uh, the language that we know. Mm. And sometimes uh, when you meditate and you saw the Master inside, and you speak Cantonese to the Master, and the Master answers you in Cantonese. <laughs> or in whatever dialect, but outside. Uh, we have to respect the law of Maya, mm. like everyone else. We must meditate, <laughs> uh, see the light, and listen to the sound every day. And then your life will become better and more purposeful and more contented. And you will know that you don't need anything to be happy. Before that, before initiation, before light and sound, before enlightenment, you just know that you need to be happy, <laughs> but you think you need everything to be happy, and you never be happy. And after initiation, you know that you don't need anything to be happy, just the minimum basic. And that is the purpose of uh, our initiation, of practicing just to uh, let us know true happiness. Mm. And that's when we say, heaven is on earth, and we say, heaven is within you, it, because you really have heaven within you after you initiate it and practice every day. Everywhere you go, you carry that heaven with you. <laughs> and so it is say, the kingdom of God is within you, truly. If it's not within you, doesn't matter how hard you work, how much you have outside, how can you be happy? So it is true that the kingdom of God is within you. And I think it must be within you, we must carry it. Otherwise, we can never find it anywhere. Mm. And most of you who practice diligently and uh, also feel the benefit of the Kuan Yin method, you still work yeah, like before, or maybe even more, but you feel different, and you feel you can go on, and you feel sure of the future. We say the kingdom is in our own side. If we do not believe in ourselves, how can we be happy? If the kingdom of God is in the side, then we do not believe in ourselves. If we do not believe in ourselves, 在这边也是游泳啊已经修行观音法门久了一点我们就每天在专心修行的话 I often am afraid of the spiritual realms I feel like 
I don't know them, that they're foreign to me. Yes, yes. And I've also heard it said that it's dangerous to go on the path alone. True. And I'm wondering why it's dangerous. Because uh, spiritual realm, you know, the invisible realm, just as this realm, mm -hmm. you could uh, wander into a non reason region or in some uh, so called, uh, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> not favorable quarter, mm -hmm. yeah? And just like in America or somewhere else, sometimes people advise you not to go there, not to go here. Mm -hmm. yes, you know, we racist sometimes, yeah? Mm -hmm. And there are poor quarter, rich quarter, you know, forbidden area, a military secret uh, area and all that kind of thing. If you go there, it's be dangerous for you. Yeah, they might attack you or they might lead you astray, you know, into astral region, some bad region that you could not go out. So you but could if you have a master, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So you could get stuck, possibly. Sure, I get stuck there. You could get confused. Yeah, yeah or just like here, if you go in some uh, dark area, you shouldn't go at night, you get robbed, mm -hmm. sometimes get killed. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering, I guess a further question is, um, if the universe is just, then how is it? How is it that we could encounter danger? The universe has many level of consciousness. The universe created many things, has many creation. Just like even in this world, there are many different people, different thinking. We look alike. We are born equal, and we should be equal. But some people are influenced by their own uh, destiny or karma or bad friends, you know, background, and they do some bad things. Yeah, even though they know the law forbid them to kill or to rob and all that, they still do it. Mm -hmm. The same uh, in the uh, universal creation, there are different regions of uh, existence, you know? Yeah, that, just like, that's why we have to practice, so we go into a higher one, a better one. Yeah, there are many levels for people to choose because God gives us free will. So if you don't practice well, you end up in some lower region. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why we have to practice, so we don't have to go there. As I say, okay, if any initiated people huh, can take up five generations of themselves, liberation, then because I have so many disciples, um, maybe it means the whole world already. You know, because we have so many relatives, but say, no, each one has only a, a limited number of relatives and friends, or five or six, even hundred generation. Yeah, we don't always have so much. You know, even if we're born and then we don't have a more sons to carry out our bloodline. Then it's finished here. For example, like that. Yeah, and besides, even if uh, the master can take the whole population of the world out to heaven, there will be other beings who will be born here, a being from hell or from other astral world or second world who, without a master, must come back here, be born again. Only the soul with master can continue to study and go further. The soul without master, even if you are on the fourth level, you must come back. If you don't happen to meet a master from the fourth level and take you up, you must come back here. You're a very high being, but still you have to come here, be a human, and then study with a master, and then go quickly. Yeah? Or third level, even you have no bad karma, but no good for you, you can just hang around there forever. It's no improvement, no knowledge. It's just okay, you know. And then after some time, the three world will be destroyed, and you also gone. You have to find somewhere else. And you must find a master. Yeah. If not, whichever world, <laughs> you can't reach the fifth without master anyhow. Mm -hmm. uh, the most you can reach the fourth level, but this is very difficult. You probably have some master in order to reach the fourth level. But those masters may be not powerful enough to send you up above the, the darkness into the field. So you hang around there. Nothing happened to you, no karma, no bad thing, but you don't have nothing, just hang around. You know? And no improvement. So I come down and then do something, yeah, earn the merit, and meet the master, and come up again. Okay? Actually, you cannot. Uh, cover the whole world. Huh? Each master has limited number to take with him. Not that the, the master don't want to take the whole world, but there's no affinity. When the other little sticks to two, how does it feel? I don't mean here. 
Wir haben nichts anderes miteinander zu tun. Ja, aber nein. Nicht so engste äh, Relation. Hm? We must go by bloodline, you know. For example, we have affinity with ten people, huh? or hundred people. Then we'll be born into their bloodline, in their circle, and bound together by this affinity, and become mother and friend or husband and wife. You cannot always have relation with the whole mankind, even though they in turn maybe have some relation with us. Yeah? For example, even now you have relationship with the mosquito, because they suck your blood. Now, also same blood. <laughs> but you cannot take the mosquito to heaven with you. We don't need it there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't just <laughs> do that. <laughs> and we go by affinity, you know. Most of the people being born again and again into the same group of affinity. Yeah? For example, last life she's your mother, this life she's your father. Uh, next life is she's your husband, for example. Just take turn and uh, go around in the circle and become each other relatives all the time. Therefore, we have just a limited number of friends and relatives. That's why you love each other. You must come in and go in all the time together. You cannot forget, see? That's why when you have a baby in your arm, you love it right away. Even you don't know each other before. Huh? Before he's born, he's a total stranger. And you don't even ask him to come. He just introduce himself into your body and then come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you have affinity with each other, see? Maybe sometimes enemy. That's why you have love hate relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, do it in the name of God. If you have to give to the beggar some money, and you just say, Well, this is God money and give it back to God then it's okay. You must think this way, you must act this way, you must move your life along this line, and you will have never bad karma. You have no bad karma, binding bad karma. Hey, <laughs> you Even black color is useful sometimes. <laughs> so everything is made for purpose, huh? Even some things we think very bad, but in a proper use, they are useful. Like in our home, the toilet is the most <laughs> unwanted place, but it's very necessary, you know? Therefore, we learn to value things in life accordingly and not to judge rashly or blindly. Therefore, in the Bible, it is stated that judge not, so that you shall not be judged. Whatever we laugh at today, <laughs> we will be laughed at tomorrow ourselves. So be careful how you treat others, especially your relatives. You should treat them cautiously and nicely, because they are also members of the family of God. No one is exceptional. No one is not a member of the family of God. Even if they deny God, if they don't want to know God, they are still God's children. <laughs> they are just like the naughty children, mischievous infants. They say they don't want to recognize their parents. But however, they have been born by that very same parents. Coming from a family of famed and respected Taoists, Taoist Hu was able to see the invisible world and communicate with invisible beings since childhood. As a young man, he was trained to be proficient in various forms of Taoist arts and used his remarkable powers to help other people in need. But Taoist Hu further searched many years for a true enlightened master to advance in spiritual practice. It was his Taoist master Liu Pei Zhong who had prophesied early on that a great female master would come. Indeed, many years later, Taoist Hu had the fortune to receive initiation from Supreme Master Cheng Hai to be liberated from the cycle of life and death. 
He saw that Supreme Master Cheng Hai was a rare master and that she never accepts any offerings. Once, Supreme Master Cheng Hai was giving out blessed food to association members. Hundreds of people were busy trying to catch the blessed food that she was nimbly tossing out toward them. Taoist Hu was puzzled. He could not figure out why that plain popcorn in the small bags was so precious. He was intrigued, so he began to investigate. The two powerful bodhisattvas were there because Supreme Master Cheng Hai was present. According to Taoist Hu, light was radiating from Wenzhou Shri Bodhisattva's hands onto the popcorn. All such blessed popcorn pieces continued to emit white light. <laughs> Once, while he was meditating, the transcendental form of Supreme Master Cheng Hai came in a vision and told him that the husband of a fellow initiate who had just passed away would be brought to the Western Paradise. <laughs> The tower saw that his deceased friend's face was very dark. He related Supreme Master Ching Hai's words to the widowed fellow initiate and advised her to look out at night to see if there was any bright light because Supreme Master Ching Hai would be bringing her husband to the Western Paradise. To everyone's surprise, the fellow initiate's granddaughter was the one who saw the transcendental body of Supreme Master Ching Hai. <laughs> Get then, Taoist Hu opened the coffin and was amazed by what he saw. Throughout the years, Countless students of Supreme Master Cheng Hai have reported similar experiences. Master's transcendental form would appear to individuals, initiated or not, and assist not only her disciples, but also their loved ones. As Supreme Master Cheng Hai explained during a 1994 lecture in Thailand. Sometimes the people can see uh, the spiritual master presence in their house without the master being there, without the, the true physical presence of the master. And that's why the master can always help the disciples, it doesn't matter where they are, without having to run around in, in the physical body. Even if they don't see, the master is always there. There is nothing impossible in spiritual power, but this is not magical power. I don't have to stay there, cross my leg and do some mudra or recite some mantras in order to transport myself to the, your house. It just happened naturally. That is due to the grace of the master power. When I say master, I mean 
the highest God, the Buddha. Six months after his initiation, Tao Tzu's wife, who was initiated some time after him, became very ill, lying unconscious. Although he could always help people who came to him with strange problems or illnesses, this time he wasn't able to cure her. Helpless and frustrated, he kept on meditating and praying constantly for Master's help. Several months later, Tao Tzu's wife started mumbling to him some strange instructions. For example, Pretending to be serious, Tao Tzu replied. Nonetheless, the Taoists realized that something was going to happen. One morning, his wife was standing in the doorway as usual. Observing nothing abnormal, he went inside to get something. When he came out a few minutes later, his wife had disappeared. Feeling that something was wrong, he searched the neighborhood but could not find her. He immediately summoned help from his son, daughter and neighbors. She was nowhere to be found. Using his magical power, he even asked for the help of the mountain gods and local deities to find her, but there was no news from them. Several months passed, then one day when he was meditating, the transcendental form of Supreme Master Ching Hai appeared in a vision and told him that his wife was now at the Heavenly Lake Palace. The astral body of the Taoist went there immediately and found his wife sitting cross-legged inside the palace. Towers too then realized what had happened and asked about the whereabouts of a dead physical body. Sure enough, many months after his wife's disappearance, a police officer rushed to inform Towers Tu that her body was found near his house. Upon reaching the location, he saw the body sitting with crossed legs. There was one strange phenomenon, however. All the flesh was decomposed except for one wrist. It was perfectly intact. <laughs> Tao 
Before initiation into the Kuan Yin method, through meditating on his own for more than 10 years, the Taoist was able to visit many heavenly and hellish places within the first three levels of consciousness. But at the time of initiation into the Kuan Yin method with Supreme Master Cheng Hai, he learned that there exist many higher realms of consciousness. The Taoist immediately tried to meditate diligently in an effort to reach those higher levels. But all he could do was stay within the first three realms. Then, on the fourth day, during the Kuan Yin meditation, a road which he had never walked before suddenly appeared. It led to a cave. As soon as he walked in, the cave entrance closed rapidly. Trapped, the Taoist became panicked. He began to use whatever knowledge he had learned in the last 50 years of his life. He tried all kinds of sorcery, mantras and mudras, but all were to no avail. The Taoist thought of his last hope, to ask for his master's help. <sighs> the Taoist heard Supreme Master Cheng Hai's voice, asking whether he knew how to recite the five holy names she had taught him at the time of initiation. He then could hear Supreme Master Cheng Hai sigh for a long, long time. Then, from tens of thousands of miles away, came the last two holy names. Once Supreme Master Cheng Hai finished reciting these holy names, the cave entrance automatically opened. The Taoist was freed. After coming out of his meditative state, he began to seriously learn the five holy names. He felt very puzzled that his brain could memorize almost 100 mantras, yet the short five holy names charged with the master's power he could not so easily memorize. Taoist Tu is grateful to have met Supreme Master Cheng Hai and to practice spiritually with the wondrous Kuan Yin method. The Buddha has the most powerful magician <laughs> called in Sanskrit. Mogala, the one that we have celebrated recently in the festival of uh, Ulamba, the one who could go to hell and visit his mother in hell, the one who could go to different level of heaven and check out different planet. And when he died, it was because of his magical power. The people who lost in the battle of magical power with him because they have less power than he did, they kill him by some physical mean, not by magic. So anyway, the Buddha have warned him not to keep showing the magical power to outside people. Don't let other people know about it and should not use it at random, but he did not listen. <laughs> he went out and compete and all that. So later on, he incurred a lot of enmity, and that's how he died. Well, his soul will be rescued by Buddha, of course. There's no problem about that. But what I mean is, magical power is not the safest way to rely on, eh? Put it that way. He could even go to the hell, eh? because his mother treated the Sangha, I mean the assembly of the Buddha, very badly, according to the story. She even cheated them. She put meat in the food and all that, because she knows they are vegetarian, but she cheated them and all that, all kind of bad things she did. And she looked down upon the Sangha, the practitioners like you are right now. Not necessarily the monk only, whoever practiced the Kuan Yin method with the Buddha at that time, she looked down upon. So she has to go to hell, and she could not even eat anything in hell, it keep burning fire all the time. And uh, Moggallan is the powerful magician. He has a lot of magical power. He can even go to that hell. Nobody could be allowed to go there, you know, alive even. He was still alive, and he went to hell to visit his mother. 
because he knows his mother is suffering greatly in hell without food and hungry and get burned all day or night. So he went there to try using his magical power to manifest some food and give it to her. But every time the morsel reached her throat, it became turned into burning coal due to her bad karma. Because anything you do to a true spiritual practitioner is the greatest sin you can ever do. If you kill a normal person, it is already very, very great. But if you cheat or insult the Sangha, mean the true practitioner, like the Kuan Yin Method practitioner, who is truthful, who is virtuous, who is vegetarian, and who is meditating of peace and kindness and everything like that. If you harm any of these persons, even Jesus say, shake the dirt out of your feet in front of any of the house who treated you like badly. Shake the dust off your feet from that house because they're going to be really in hell, in a terrible uh, retribution. So Moggallana, his mother was so terrible that she treated all the monks and the disciples with disdain and very, very uh, disrespectful and bad to them and make them eat meat and all that when she gives them offering. So anyway, uh, so she has to go to hell, burning hell like that. And even her son is a disciple of the Master. Buddha cannot even help because she knows it and she did it. Not like she doesn't know and ignorant. She knows everything and she did the contrary. So that was her retribution. And even her son, who is so powerful in magic, cannot help her. He could even manifest food in hell, in a hungry hell. He manifests food right there and give it to her. He's very powerful. One of the uh, foremost disciples of the Buddha, the close disciples, and a monk, so virtuous and so good, still cannot help the mother because she was too bad, too bad. She uh, harmed the truth practitioner, that's why. And so after he knows that he's not powerful enough, so he has to go back and beg with the Buddha then. And the Buddha say it takes all the <laughs> disciples <laughs> to help one mother, such a bad one. Take all the merit of all the whole Sangha assembly, the whole true practitioner assembly at that time, disciples of the Buddha, who came from a three months retreat even in the mountain. Such a powerful Sangha only then can help his mother. Mogalana has to go and buy fruit, vegetable, fruit, five kind of different color fruit, not just one fruit, not just a mango or a papaya, have to have five kinds. The Buddha lists it all. And he has to wait until what day, what month, that all the retreat monks and Sangha, the true practitioner, came out to see the Buddha out of the retreat. That time they are powerful. After the summer retreat, they are very powerful, full of <laughs> blessing and full of store of merit and divine power. And he has to offer all of this to all of them. He must have been working day and night then as a monk. Uh, he must have got a, a part-time job or something after that. Because being a monk, how he has all this money, you know? He must have gone out and worked. Because you cannot go back for that. You have to buy it by yourself. And so the whole list the Buddha gave him, what to do, what to do, what to do, and offer to whom and whom and whom. And then mother was saved. Can you imagine? That's why I keep telling you guys, magical power is not the way. It's good for a little bit fun. And it's uh, maybe postpone some sickness or misery, postponing, delaying, but you cannot uh, bribe the Lord of Karma 